Hello, I am Pastor Ernest L. Deese with Agape Holistic Life Changing Ministries. As always, I am humbled and honored to share with you what thus says the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, oh gracious Heavenly Father, I truly thank you for you being the great I am. Lord God, I thank you for being the wind beneath our wings. Oh Lord, our God, I thank you for being El Shaddai, the almighty God in whom I have put all my trust. Now, Father God, I pray that you bless, oh God, this class and all the hearers that somebody somewhere will receive you as their Lord and Savior. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I thank the Lord again and, and again and again for all our church members. I'm very proud of every last one of them, as well as our partners. Amen. And all our well wishes and all of those, amen, of our supporters throughout the United States and the world. Today we want to talk about, amen, I'll use as our subject, coming out of the world. Coming out of the world. And always remember that Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And that's a real good reason for us to be all in with Jesus, amen, and all out of the world. Amen. Before I get into our uh, discussion on today, I want to make sure that I read this announcement from our dear Elder Coleman, who is in charge of our prayer ministry. He says, come join us and get connected on the first Friday prayer call. Let us come together and make our supplications known. Amen. The call will begin at 7.30 p.m. Check your email for more details. And I say to you, as many of you that can, please try to get in on the prayer call. Many are blessed, amen, on the prayer call. Thank God you have others praying with you for your special request. I want to read in your hearing our scripture lesson text coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 18. And also we want to read in your hearing 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Let us read uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 18. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. El Shaddai, thank you, Jesus. Also, reading 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, reads on this wise. Do not love the world or the things in the world, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 
Amen. I will read a verse that I want you to let stick in your mind. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, everything we are saying today, I believe, is of a serious magnitude. So I really want you to listen. Jesus Christ, I really believe, is coming soon. And I want as many as possible, amen, to go back with Jesus Christ. But I have found, just like the book of Revelation teaches us, in these last days, the church, by and large, has gotten lukewarm. It appears that so many people think they can just skate along and do almost anything and sin a little and try to live a little for Jesus, sin a little and try to live a little for Jesus. And yet, amen, when the heavenly call is made, They'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Now, I want you to take a close look at this container. It's a container of oil and water mixture. Now, they both are in the same container. Yes, but yet, if you look closely, you can see that they are still separate. Now, even if I mix it up and let it set for a while, you will see that after a while, the water will go its way and the oil will go its way. I'm going to let it sit here for a while. And just like that oil and water are separate. Don't care how much you mix it. The same is true for those that are born again believers. Amen. And this world. Amen. We are in the world. Amen. But we, amen, are not of the world. As God was talking to his people in Isaiah, Chapter 1, around verse 18. Come now, let us reason together. And I say to you, come now, let us talk this thing out. Let us settle this matter of trying to be a, a born-again believer while at the same time trying to live the life are one who has never been born again. It just doesn't work. Jesus stated, amen, concerning the water and the spirit. You must be born again of the water and of the spirit. And if anybody knows, Jesus knows. Now, we find in St. John chapter 17, around verse 15 through 21, and I want to read that in your hearing. Uh, St. John, let's turn to that if you will. Chapter 17, and we want to look at uh, verse 15 through 21. And let's take a quick, a real good look at that, amen, if you will. I'm going to begin at verse 15. Now, listen what Jesus said. This is very important. And he's praying to his father. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world but that you should keep them from the evil one. Thank you, Jesus. They are not of the world, 
just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. <clears throat> and for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. And remember now, that word sanctified, they are set aside, they are cleansed, they are set aside, amen, for the master's use. I do not pray for these alone, <clears throat> but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Isn't that awesome? So Jesus prayed for me and he prayed for you because I do believe. In the words of the apostles, I thank God for praying, amen, for me. Now, as I before said, that word sanctify, to set aside for a special or holy purpose. Now, let me ask you this question. <clears throat> How can we expect to act like the world, that you, you get what I'm saying, live in sin like the world, die in sin like the world, but be resurrected to live with Jesus throughout eternity in peace and sinless. Now, how can that be? <clears throat> Revelation chapter 22, around verse 21, uh, verse 11, teaches us that he who is unjust, let him be unjust still. When Jesus comes, however Jesus catch you or find you, that's how you're going to remain. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. There will come a time, listen carefully, there will come a time when our destiny is sealed. There is a strong warning not to put off becoming a believer in Christ Jesus. It represents the hopelessness of the final state of unbelievers. When Christ comes, people will not be able to change their destiny. Now, what they are then, they will remain forever. Whenever Jesus returns, whenever he comes in the twinkle of an eye, However you are, you will remain. People should not expect some second chance in the future, but should make the decision about worshiping God now in the light of what they have read, amen, in this word. There will come a time when change will be impossible when no further opportunity will be given for repentance on the one hand or for apostasy on the other. There will come a time when you won't have an opportunity to turn away. But why? Because you'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air in a twinkling of an eye. However you will be at that time, that's how you're going to be. There will come a time in which the good and the evil find themselves at a time when no further opportunity for repentance remains. The lesson is, change while there is time. Let me say that again. Change for the better, while there is still time. Today 
is the day of salvation. Don't try to be a know-it-all. Yield yourself to the word of God. Today is the only time that you have a man to work with. Well, pastor, what are you saying? I'm saying that yesterday is gone forever. And tomorrow is not promised. It's not promised to you. Now, tomorrow will come. But will you see it? Will you be a part of tomorrow? Today is your opportunity to get it right. Will you hear, well done, the good and faithful servant? Or will you hear the same words the rich fool heard in Luke chapter 12, around verses 20 through 21? Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Now, he didn't make it to tomorrow. He didn't see tomorrow. Will you see tomorrow? Then those who will go, the thing that you have stored up for yourself, who will then have them? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Think about that. The fool didn't see the next day. It wasn't promised to him. All those things he laid up, I got a feeling Jody may have the most of it. Remember, God and sin will never mix or blend under any circumstance. Take a note, as the water and the oil begin to settle, each one is going back to his own corner. So is the same thing with the, with the true believer and the ungodly. Sin and righteousness just don't mix. <clears throat> I don't care how much you try to mix it up, It'll be like clay and iron. It won't hold together. The nature of God is holy. And sin is inherently evil. Therefore, as born-again believers, we must separate ourselves from the world and its lusts. We, the born-again believers, should be aware that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. If God is to remain living in our souls, it is necessary for us to live godly, even in the midst of this perverse society. <clears throat> Now, we know that sin and ungodliness is as old as the history of mankind. Yet, we are called by God to separate ourselves from the ungodly lifestyle of the world. The origin of sin was pride, rebellion, and disobedience causing man to sin in the Garden of Eden. Since then, God, through Jesus Christ, has restored fellowship between him and mankind through redemption. Jesus paid the awful price for our sins, and he paid for it on Calvary's cross with his own blood. That's just how much he loved us. Let us not squander by the way we live 
the big sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on Calvary's cross. It's time for us to be separate from the world. Not merely physical separate. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. We, we should forsake the world, the old lifestyle of sin in order to fully appreciate and maintain that holy fellowship that Jesus sacrificed so much for. Now, you read about Corinth in the Bible. We read from scriptures from Corinthians. Corinth was a city in which all kinds of imaginable sin existed. You name it, and more than likely, it was there. Male and female prostitution on the rampage. Gambling and the like. I thank God for Romans chapter 5, verse 20 through 21. Watch this. With all that sin going on, everything, God's word tells us God's law was given. Thank you, Jesus. So that all people could see how sinful they were. God's word was like a mirror to let people see themselves. But as people sin more and more, listen at this now. As people sin more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. Thank you, Jesus. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life through Christ Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Who is indeed our Lord and our Savior. You know, the sound teaching of Paul to the Corinthian church provides us guidelines for godly living today. The sinful lifestyle that existed in Corinth during Paul's time, amen, is running rampant right here, right now in our society. As Corinth was given over to pleasure seekers, so is our society today. Whether it is casinos, sports, or the like, many of these things have taken over our lives. There's nothing wrong with, you know, enjoying some of these things. But are they taking over your life? Have you become addicted to them? Have they become a God to you? And you preferring them before Jesus Christ? For many people, because they have given themselves over to these kinds of things, they squeeze God out. And that's awful. It is sad to say, listen carefully now, it is sad to say our society excuses adultery and extramarital affairs as normal. Nowadays, people say, well, everybody doing it. But that doesn't make it right. There's a lot of things everybody, so to speak, is doing. But everybody not doing it. But a lot of people are. But that doesn't make it right. Many parade homosexuality in the streets and in the media as if though it is something sanctioned by God. What is even more sad is that many are being led to believe that lie, even denying them from being told the truth. We find it in Leviticus chapter 18, I believe it's around verse 22, 
the Bible teaches us, do not practice homosexuality. Now, how much more plain can you get than that? God's word. It says, do not practice homosexuality. Having sex with another man as with a woman. It is a detestable sin. But yet our society is parading it around like it's something that is sanctioned amen, and okayed by God himself. Now, I'm a firm believer. I'm a firm believer that every American should have equal rights under the Constitution. Regardless of how you believe, you should have equal rights under the Constitution. There are people that's going to have to answer to the law of the land. But everybody everywhere is going to have to answer to the law of God. Everybody everywhere is going to have to answer to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Everybody, the judge of judges. There are those that answer to the state Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court. But everybody will have to answer to the heavenly Supreme Court. The day is coming. <clears throat> Listen at this. We must combat every lie with the word of God. God's word in Genesis 5 and 2 tells us male and female created he them. And he blessed them. I've never known for God to bless a mess. He blesses his word and those that adhere to it. It is equally sad. Now listen at this. It is equally sad to know that there are too many preachers who know better. <clears throat> but they won't do better. Nor will they teach their people better. It appears that they have chosen a lesser God as their God. Choosing, watch this now, choosing the mighty dollar as their God over the almighty and great I am, El Shaddai. Amen. The almighty one as their God. Preachers, all preachers, we no longer can afford to preach to satisfy man. We must preach for the saving of souls from the wrath of God. We find in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 through 11, for we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve. And that's true. For the good or evil we have done in this body, we are God's ambassadors. Listen, because we understand our fearful responsibility to the Lord, we must work hard to persuade others. And that's why I'm teaching what I'm teaching right now. It is no time, amen, for glass ankle and jelly back preachers. Preachers who stand for nothing but fall for everything, especially if it puts a dollar in their pocket. We must have spines of steel and stand four square on God's word. Thank you, Jesus. And preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to listen to the wise words of Paul. I want to read it in your hearing. <clears throat> the wise words of Paul. Amen. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. Just listen 
just a little bit. What it says, I want to read verses 1 through 5. Listen carefully what Paul said. He said, I solemnly urge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom. Preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to and welcome sound teaching. Isn't it awesome? Thank you, Jesus. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will, who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. But you, preacher, should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has called you or given to you. That's what I'm asking you to do. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. Love one or hate the other or despise the other. Now, I don't know about you, but I have made Jesus my choice. How about you? It is impossible to love God and love the world at the same time. Your loyalty and faithfulness will tell which you really love. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, <clears throat> coming out of the world does not mean that we should isolate ourselves from society and live like hermits. Jesus prayed in John 17, they do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but keep them safe from the evil one. They, they don't belong to this world any more than I do. I'm praying not only for these disciples, but also for all those that believe on me through their message. Perfecting holiness is an ongoing process. I thank God for apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers given to us for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith <clears throat> and of the knowledge of the Son of God. You know, we can, by reading God's word, by meditating, by attending in church worship, by private devotions, and, 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 and listen to the preaching and teaching of God's word. All of these things can help us cleanse, help cleanse ourselves and help us in a come from out of the world and separate ourselves from the world. All of these tools can be used. As I come to close, I want you to know, I do acknowledge that all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all need grace, and we need the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank God that Jesus had a master plan before the foundation of the world for the redemption of mankind. Jesus is calling you to be born again of water and of the Spirit. He wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit, and we will baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, which is the only way that Jesus and his apostles taught. Now, I hope that we've said something that will bless you real good. Please share this message in it with someone that you love. Thank you, Jesus, for your continued growth in God's word. We have in-person school of knowledge at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. In-person worship, amen, on Sunday mornings at 1130 a.m. 
and online word empowerment on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Please do not forget to like us, amen, on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please share, please share with your Facebook friends, amen, and others. Now, for more information on the plan of salvation, please call us at 678-759-8989. Let us pray. Gracious Father, I thank you once again. Please, Father, let your word fall on some hungry, oh God, and thirsty heart. Just we pray and we thank you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. May God bless you richly.